What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. You guys sent me a new video of Dr. Umar Johnson specifically talking about why black celebrities apparently don't support uh, the movement, why black celebrities don't support the movement. And I'm assuming this is uh, in reference to his school that he's been trying to build for at least the last 10 years. So I have not heard it yet. Um, I like to react to things in the moment at the same time that I'm watching it, that you guys are watching it so that it's an authentic reaction and I can give my real time thoughts. And it looks like this video is over 30 minutes. So this might be a multiple video breakdown um, that allows for us to deep dive into this conversation a little bit more thoroughly. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Whatever is to be done for us must be done by us. Mm -hmm. No, you know, and you get these Negroes running around saying, well, they opened a school and LeBron James, I respect LeBron James. I think he's a great role model for our young black men. He has a black wife. He's never been in no trouble. Mm -hmm. Loves his black children. LeBron James is a good role model. Now, on the political side, I would totally discount him as an activist. LeBron James is not an activist. He's never put anything at risk for the benefit of black people. So mm -hmm. an activist, absolutely not. But as a role model, a stand-up black man, a good example of what you, how you should conduct yourself in the public, yes, but he doesn't have a school validated. Mm -hmm. The LeBron James School in Akron, Ohio. Well, first, before we even start deep diving into that, I partially agree with them with that. And, and again, this shows you that I'm completely unbiased and I'm looking at this objectively in that I partially agree with them in that um, LeBron James has largely been a model representation of what it is that you're supposed to look like from a man's perspective. Let me say that again. I don't agree with LeBron James and the way that he moves from a political perspective at all at all not even a little bit right and but i am able to recognize what he represents as far as excellence he's always done things to the best of his ability he's married the one woman the wife savannah who i believe is a phenomenal representation of what a wife is supposed to act and look like i think that he's exhibited stellar business acumen and his ability to be able to capitalize and monetize off of his name and his image and do things the right way and negotiate contracts and outside of basketball i think that's awesome but i don't agree with him umar johnson specifically as it relates to an activist i think that for better or for worse or whether or not you agree with lebron james or not i think that he puts himself out there as a target and he wants to participate on the level and I think he wants to ascend beyond the Michael Jordan realm and into the Muhammad Ali realm when it's all over and done with but I think that he picking the wrong side um, with regard to it so as an activist I think that activism is a bit deeper than what Dr. Umar Johnson is trying to portray it to be because I believe that the people that have the most to lose and that are participating with regard to whatever message that they're trying to spread is absolutely 100 percent putting everything on the line ohio is a public school mm -hmm. it is a public school he did not build it he does not own it he does not control it it is paid for by the taxpayers of ohio mm -hmm. the jalen rose academy in detroit that is not entirely true it is a public school it is taxpayer funded but all of the additional things that lebron james is doing as far as getting corporate entities and sponsors to participate in the building and the education of that school, educating the students of that school, all of the additional amenities, the donations and the millions of dollars that he's allocating towards the parents to guarantee and to, to participate as far as guaranteeing that everybody that graduates from the school gets an opportunity to go to college, also helping the parents and things like that. It goes beyond it just being a public school. So to just say that, is being a bit disingenuous, but I do agree with him that it is a public school. And so what he's describing is a half truth. It's a half truth. And we all know it. A public charter school, the Sean yeah. Puffy Combs Academy, public charter. But they all school. still raise all money. of these schools are public 
charter school. Somebody brought me another uh, independent school that somebody brought and, and sent a brother started in uh, New York. Baba David, it is an independent school. It's not African centered. Mm -hmm. And he built it with corporate handouts. Mm. He built it with bank loans from the white bank. And he built it with handouts from white people. Mm -hmm. What I am doing, Baba David, and I want to state this for the record what I am doing. What is a handout? I just want to, I'm curious. What is a handout? What does it mean to get a handout from white people? I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Dr. Umar Johnson knows everybody, every single individual that's ever donated into his cause. And if he figured out whether or not they were white or black or half white or a percentage of white or whatever like that. And he said that, you know what? I don't know that I'm I'm refunding your money. I'm curious. I'm very, very curious. There's no school in existence in this country right now who is doing what I am doing and has done it the way that I have done it. That's Zero true. percent white subsidy mm -hmm. from banks, from government, from corporations, from white citizens. Mm -hmm. You cannot find another school in this country doing what we're doing the way we're doing it. That's a true FUBU for us and by us. For us, by us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, I'm confused, though, because one of the things that or one of the reasons why people are having such a problem with Omar Johnson, specifically as it relates to the school, is that he's not transparent as to where the money is going. And so, you know, it's easy to say nobody is doing it the way that I'm doing it. But at the same time, that's one of the problems is that nobody is doing it the way that you're doing it. They don't want the problems that come along with you because in other people's eyes, and I don't have a dog in a fight, so I'm just on the outside looking in because I have not donated to Dr. Umar Johnson. In other people's eyes, and from what I'm seeing online, people are complaining with the way that you're conducting yourself and how you're handling yourself with regard to this in the first place. So if you have an issue or there's problems that come along with aligning themselves with you the way that you're doing it, you can't sit and look at other people that are getting the results because obviously they're doing it a little bit differently and more effectively. It's, it's amazing, you know, and it's amazing how m m more people now like LeBron or even um, the, they, they named the building after Serena Williams, Nike did. But why can't she, uh, you know, make a large contribution you know, and, 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 and get a Serena Williams wing to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey School. Well, I was celebrity class, and I'm a big fan of Serena and Venus for what they represent mm -hmm. and what they have represented with their talent. Now, politically, like most of our celebrities, they're useless politically. Mm. Okay, <laughs> but I do understand the power of their example and what it means to so many of our black girls He's too polarized. and princesses. But with that being said, Baba Data, we need to come to a very firm realization that the black celebrity class is a corporate commodity, mm -hmm. a white corporate commodity. They are not going to save black people. Mm. They're not thinking about saving black people. They're too afraid of saving black people. And they are too vested in the upkeep of the white power structure to risk what they have. I disagree with them 100 percent. 100 percent. I disagree with them. As a matter of fact, I believe and there were rumblings when Dr. Umar Johnson first proposed this idea in the very, very beginning of uh, in, its inception well over 10 years ago because I was largely paying attention to it because he was polarizing. So I didn't know who he was. And so I was looking at him and I was like, yo, this guy is pretty interesting. Like he's saying some stuff that I can rock with. And then over time, his, his reputation started to erode for obvious reasons and we all know what those are, right? But if you look at somebody like LeBron James, who he first mentioned as an example, right? If you look at the school in Akron, Ohio, that LeBron James continues to champion, get behind, push, empower people behind and empower their parents and doing things for the black community specifically. 
the overwhelming majority of the kids in there and you can literally look it up. You can look at the videos. You can look at all of that. Right. The kids and the community that it serves, the large population of that community is African-American children. So what are you talking about the vested interest in preserving a power structure to keep black people down when specifically this is what he's enabling? All of these companies that align with these celebrities are publicly traded companies that have nothing to do with the power structure of white people. Literally, anybody can get a vested interest in these companies and continue to benefit off of the profitability that comes along with it. And this is one of the things, listen, I know that there's a lot of people that feel a certain type of way and they just always system this, system that, um, oppression, victim Olympics or whatever. Like this is one of the reasons why I say victim Olympics. Because why would you spend your own resources when you can use the leverage that you have and the relationships with companies, which is one of the reasons why companies become so successful in the first place? Have you ever heard of somebody creating a new company and then that like most people don't put all of their own money into it or even if they do, they still need partnerships. And so as a result, they raise money. They have rounds, venture capitalists. They literally have people that help them to reach other people based off of who it is that they do business with and build relationships in order to become more successful. You cannot be polarizing like he is and have the mentality that he has and expect to expect to become successful, regardless of how you feel about him as an individual. And I think that he needs people around him. I think it might be too late for Dr. Umar Johnson as far as who he is publicly and his public perception. But I think that largely he needed people around him that would reel him in and help him to become a better version of himself so that he can present himself to be, you know, easier to work with instead of being so polarizing and expecting other people's money because that's exactly what he's asking for. He's asking for other people's money to help him build his vision for people, which is exactly what he's saying that they shouldn't be doing for the other parts of the black communities that they serve and whatever demographics that they're serving. He's asking for money from other people to execute his vision. And then he's killing LeBron James and Serena Williams and all of them for leveraging other people's money through the relationships that they've established in order to execute their vision. Maybe I see it differently. I might do multiple breakdowns of this video because I think that there's much more to mine in here. Make sure you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the Patreon. Link is in the description. Hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I love you. I appreciate you. But I'm curious as to what you guys think about this. And I think that this warrants a larger discussion because maybe I'm off and I'm open to the possibility that I'm wrong on this one. But I believe that you should leverage your network because your network is your net worth. And that's how you truly get things done. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.